What is going on everybody man? King Recon here. I just want to let y'all know immediately dog. I'm hyped right now. I was told uh, two days ago, it was two or three days ago, to get off of all social media. They said, son, you can't even risk this to the slightest. I don't think I've ever been told that before, dog. They were like, dude, just leave. Just get out of here. By so many people. And I'm like, bro, what is this chapter, dog? So we're finally here. We're finally going to read the latest installment of the best-selling manga in history. By God, Batman's in our range. Superman's right behind him. By God, well, the only one that can surpass them is the one, the only one. Peace, man. I'm ready. And because I'm hyped, because I'm ready, uh, knowing how I am, I'm going to be paying a lot of attention to the comment section for just in case I miss something, man. Because in the hype, if this chapter is what y'all are telling me, just, just from the vibe, just from how everybody told me to just leave, dog. Just leave everything behind and go like uh, freaking Musashi Miyamoto or something, dog. And just get the flag nards out of here, right? And, and so I was like, okay, I got it. I got it, man. We're out. And thank God and the day has finally come. And here we are, man. Chapter 957. What is this? Chapter 956.99. I don't know. We'll, we'll worry about that later. Chapter 957. I haven't, I haven't even clicked on the title for this one, man. Last week, I clicked on the title. This week, I was so scared about clicking the title because I was like, bro, I'm already hyped enough. If I see a nasty title, I'm going to fly. I'm going to fly, man. So, yeah, like I was saying before, I'm going to have my ears and my eyes in the comments section because usually whenever I get this hype, I tend to miss information. So I'm going to have my eyes and ears in the comments so that y'all can let me know what I missed, all right? We'll cut that deal, man. We'll cut that deal right now. If last week I was afraid to press that thing, this week I'm even more so, man. And it's, it's not a fear of, like, crap, I don't, I don't want to know what happens. It's a fear of, I don't know if I can handle what is going to go down here, man. Dead serious. Dead serious, man. I, I don't know. But here we go, bro. My heart is pumping at the speed of light. I, you have my nerves, dog. I, I can barely stand still. 9.57. The title is called Ultimate. My God. Bro, that by itself has me spooked. Yes, I caught this in time. So my, my computer doesn't, um, doesn't overload. Beautiful. This should be smooth sailing from here. One Piece Chapter 957 Ultimate. And here we have all some of the straw hats right here. We have uh, Robin on the right. Is that Robin as like one of those show contestant individuals wearing a finger? Like she's in the Price is Right dog? They're like, yeah! And you got Nami as a contestant, Chopper as a contestant, and Luffy as a contestant. And they're all looking fresh. They even have the questionnaire thing on his head. One Piece Chapter 957, man. This is the cover page. Do we have a color page too? Yo, this color page is beautiful. Oh, this is an instant save. Well, no, I'll, I'll save it later. I'll save it later. I'll save it later. Bro, but look at this. Pick up your speed. And right here, oh, Nami looks incredible right here. I always, I'm, I'm a big fan of like the, the hair getting taken by the wind gimmick uh, that they usually do like in color pages or in covers, whatever the case may be. Um, I'm always a big fan of that. And to see that Luffy still, no matter what, is in the front. The hat in hand, making sure he doesn't fall off, is so cool. Look at look at how look 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 at the brothers right here, man. The little brother in Chopper and the big brother in Zoro. You know Zoro is always taking care of Chopper, man. The first indication of well, we've known about this for a while, but the first real indication of that was back in the David Back fight, right? But seeing Zoro there now, I uh, just slump. <laughs> well, he has like one hand right here, like trying to make sure that Chopper doesn't fall off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you have Sanji, Usopp, and and Nami right there in the middle, and then in the back you have Brook. Who <laughs> Brooks enjoying the flag nerds under that thing, dog? He's like, yeah. You got Robin back there too, also looking amazing. And then you got Frankie. Oh my boy, Frankie's looking fresh though, dog. Is that a ponytail he's got going on, man? My boy's looking fresh. But anyways, great color page, amazing colors, and I'm looking forward to saving that after this is all said and done. New world. Oh my god. It is an around the world chapter, man. It's another one. It's another one, man. I was shook. I was thinking. I was like, bro, I, if I turn the page and I see Onigashima, how am I going to react? Because I'm going to be hype. But if I see something around the world, I'm going to be shook. Because there's so many implications if we start an around the world chapter, dog. 
Gotta settle down. <laughs> we have to settle down. New World Marine HQ. You must be satisfied, Isho, Fujitora. So is, is that a Kainu talking? It has to be. It's a new Marine Ford. As the day of the raid draws closer on the other side is, the abolition, the, the abolition of the Seven Warlord system was your goal after all. We never saw eye to eye on it, but the kings of the world have spoken. And this wonderful panel of New Marine Ford, as I'm going to assume that is uh, Fujitora and Akainu. Yes, it is. Oh, and they're not, he's not actually there. Is that Fujitora with injuries? Yo, the Revolutionary Army did some damage, dog. They did some damage. You still think the Warlords were a necessity despite all the sacrifices that we had to make for their sake? It must be because you've never personally suffered under them. Yo, Fuji Taurus spit out here spitting facts. Let's just put our faith in the SSG going forward. SSG? Let's put our faith in the SSG. SSG, SSG. Is that a new thing? Or could that possibly be connected to sword? Is that like a, a small thing for like sword? Like sword stealth group or sword something something let's put our faith in the ssg going forward sounds like a title you put like in 2k like yeah, i'm gonna name i'm gonna name my uh my my team the ssg what in the flying flyer does that stand for i'm going to assume that, that it go back goes back to sword right i, I, don't, I don't even want to check <laughs> i feel like if i go back and check uh how, how, oh let's see let's see well let's we'll continue i think ssg is probably leading towards either uh, the sword group that was introduced last chapter, or something completely new, so we'll keep it off from there. But my boy Akainu is always looking fresh, and Fujitora looks extremely damaged, man. I mean, you, he has the Okoro Triple H um, uh, patch right here, indicating that my man has, re has, has probably received a concussion, right? He probably got his head rocked. He probably got Millie rocked by, like, Sabo, or can you imagine, like, Ka Karasu just Millie rocking Fujitora in the back of the head? It's like, ah! Yeah, somebody like you have Sabo in the Dempsey role, dude, making Fujitora with it, making him um have a concussion. Yo, and it looks like he ha he also has a um um one of those things. See, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying, man. When the hype gets to me, I tend to forget things, bro. I don't even remember what the name of that thing is. You know what I'm saying, darling? Like, this is what happens. The ba the power balance of the world will definitely be shaken. Let's continue. Has it occurred to you that it might change for the worse? Oh, no, he doesn't have one of those things. It's just that he's sitting down, and, and of course, he's carrying a stick with him. And then you have, yo, it looks like Fujitora or his group. The the ship that he's on is undergoing a battle right now. Are they, are they currently chasing after an, uh, one of the Shishibukai? Because you have one of them over here firing a cannon, and the one behind him is carrying this massive gun, dude. Like, it's from Borderlands or something, though. Like, this man has, like, a Borderlands 3 ultimate weapon or something. Apparently, in Wano, Big Mom and Kaido formed an alliance! They know! And if they know, that means that Kobe was the one that reported it to them. So it means that Kobe, of course, has to have some sort of connection with both of them. Now, I know that our, the, the theories that have been coming up since the chapter 592 cover page with Akainu being a member of S.W.O.R.D., it could possibly be... It, it, we, we could now... That could now be the case. Because originally I was like, man, is Kobe gonna withheld? Is he gonna withhold that information for himself? But no, yo, they know. They know one hundred and ten percent. Apparently, in Wano, Big Mom and Kaido formed an alliance. What does that mean? What does that mean? What does this mean? The rocks have returned. Good for me. Stop talking like there's some kind of legend. This is reality we're facing here. Bro, the rocks. Wait, wait a minute. If that is true, then that means that everything that we have been led to believe at this point in time is probably factual as well. White being part of that crew. Um, the, the individual that's with Weevil being part of that crew. Uh, possibly, I don't know, man, who else? Who else? Shaggy probably being part of the crew as well. Bro, the rocks, pirates, bro. Does this mean that the rocks have returned? <laughs> Stop talking like there's some kind of legend. This is reality we're facing. And it's like Akainu is putting everything back into perspective. Like, yo, you're talking about them like as if they were a myth. As if they were, a, you know, a tale of, of old times. But this is reality, son. This is a situation that we have to strategize and tactically move out in order to apprehend. That's the way I'm looking at him. And that's the way that I kind of... Because if, if he is saying in that manner, this is reality we're facing. 
Uh, Kaido, at this point right, right now, is going in his mind trying to think of what he wants to do. Because he realizes that Wano is not their territory. Wano is not just some place they can just walk in and get away unscathed. If they were try to, if, if they were to attempt to uh, do an invasion, because they know what would happen. There's there's two emperors there, and, and if there's two emperors going off against the Marines, caught in this massive war that's already going down with Luffy, that island's probably going to cease to exist. I mean, with Big Mom and Kaido there by itself, they're going to cease to exist. You feel me? So, Kaido's looking at it from that light as well, man. This is reality we're facing. For this to happen when we're already so busy, what a disaster. When you have Akainu seeing that the situation is kind of looking like it's out of his control. For this to happen when we're already so busy, what a disaster. Like, now, now you understand Akainu. Now you understand what it means to be a fleet admiral in a situation like this. Something that Sengoku probably had to deal with so much. Where he had to prioritize certain things over other things. Because he realized that that would have to be how certain situations would unfold. Because Akainu is new to this, even though he has that mentality, that state of mentality, that mama mentality of, of wanting to get something done at, at whatever, at any cost. Uh, even he is coming to understand, like, Flagnards, this is bad. This is really, really bad. But I just want to go back to this one second. So he says, does, does this mean the rocks have returned? So Fujitora knows about the rocks. It looks like the rocks pirates, th this, this thing about Big Mom and Kaido, at one point in time, having been on the same ship is something that is uh, well-known knowledge to a lot of people. Originally, I was, or maybe not a lot of people, maybe just to, 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 the, big, to the big boys, you know what I'm saying? Maybe to like uh, to the people who have been around for that long, as, as stated back in chapter 107. Uh, so everybody who was back around in that era, or was alive in that era, knew of the rocks, like we knew of how uh, Hina spoke of the rocks as like this legendary uh, pirate crew, you know what I'm saying? So Fujitora knows about them as well. Um, and the fact that Akainu is looking at this as, as a disaster is kind of spooky. Compared, like, like he said, when we're already so busy, I mean, they're trying to apprehend the, apprehend the Chichibukai. They just got finished fighting against the revolutionaries. Like, it's insane right now for them. Here we go. All right, next page. Two of the Emperor's allied. And it just had to be now of all times? Who is this? Two of the Emperor's allied, and it just had to be now of all times. Well, the report stated the alliance is only tentative at this stage. There hasn't been any damage done yet. Is that Kong? Kong and, uh, I think that's Sengoku. Yeah, you, you see the goat. That, that's Sengoku. There hasn't been, no, no, that's not Kong. I can't even see, bro. See, this is, this is what I mean by, by me not being able to see, dog. There hasn't been any damage done yet, but we have no idea what they're planning, and we have no countermeasures prepared either. In truth, we, all, we know almost nothing about the legendary Rocks Pirates. Brother, this is looking to be like a Rocks Pirates reunion at this point. They keep bringing up Rocks. Where's Rocks himself? Where's Rox himself? In truth, they said, in truth, we know almost nothing about the legendary Rox pirates. So they only know of their existence, but they don't know about like, who they were about, or possibly who was in the crew. Big Mom and Kaido have been fighting like cats and dogs for years. No one could have foreseen this. Very few Marines are familiar with the name Rox nowadays. Many years ago on the pirate's island, Beehive. On the Beehive? The one that Blackbeard is on? Many significant individuals came together to seek a quick path to fame and fortune. That meeting led to the formation of the Rocks Pirates. Bro, that, that can't be a coincidence. Blackbeard himself must know the territory that he's, sit on, that he's sitting on once belonged to the Rocks Pirates. Knowing Blackbeard and how, how much he goes into research. It, I mean, if my man went into research to go find his fruit, even though that was his thing, but sure, while doing that research to find his fruit, he must have found out that on that same island was the formation of the Rocks Pirates. There is, th th it can't be a coincidence. It can't not, it cannot be a coincidence, man. That is crazy. So on the very same island, I said many years ago, you know, just like that Square Enix, or the, the PlayStation conference, many years ago, Square Enix released a groundbreaking title. You know, when they were talking about the Final Fantasy VII Remake, man. Now, for some reason, I think of many years ago, I always think back to that damn thing. But on the Pirates Island Beehive, many significant individuals came together to seek a quick path to fame and fortune. And that leading led to the formation of the Rocks Pirates. They were a violent group killing both friend and foe alike. You know, they didn't discriminate, dog. If you were in front of them, they were waxing you, dog. They, they, they were pulling, like, good old 1999 Undertaker. Like, there was no friend or foe, there was no friend or foe there, dog. My boy Undertaker took out anyone and everyone. Same thing with Stone Cold, dog. Stone Cold, it didn't matter if you were babyface or a heel, you're getting the stunner. That's just the way it is. That's probably how the, the way the Rocks Pirates works. The Rocks Pirates were the Attitude Era WWF superstars. That's just, <laughs> that's looking to be the case. It's member, it's members included. Whitebeard, Big Mom, bro, the card for me. 
shame, yo! Whitebeard, Big Mom, and Kaido in their youth, they were led by their captain, Rocks. Bro, you see Big Mom right here, you see Kaido, bro, that's a nasty, flipping pirate girl. Look at Whitebeard, dog. So the guy in the, so the person in the middle is Rocks? That person in the middle is Rocks? We have Whitebeard right here, Big Mom, Kaido, and then in the background right here, we see someone else, and then the, but in the front, you see somebody very, very small. Whitebeard, Big Mom, and Kaido and their youth were led by their Captain Rocks. Bro, get out of here, dog! Like, dude, we had been speculating and theorizing about this for so long. And this second chapter in a row where Oda's like, I got y'all, dog, here you go! But the Captain, man. I mean, none of the other kind of implications that puts on the captain. I always say the reason why we all hype up Roger as much as we do is because of the individuals around him, man. We know how powerful Rayleigh is. We know how powerful a um, an individual like Odin is, is is being testified to be. We know how powerful the, the other individuals that era were, like a Whitebeard, a Shiki, a Garp, a Sengoku, and the one who ruled that era was Roger, man. So when you have a Big Mom, a Kaido and a white beard, all young, being led by one person. Bro. <sighs> Who is this dude, bro? Who is this dude? The Rocks. This man, they're Captain Rocks. If you smell Yo, man, it's Dwayne Johnson, bro. Indeed, those three used to sail on the same ship, and they're all shook, unbelievable. Many others who sailed on the rocks also eventually made a name for themselves, such as the Gold... The Golden Lion! Bro, Shiki was on the crew too? The Golden Lion, the Silver Axe, Captain John? The same treasure that Buggy's looking for? And Ochoku, Ochoku, known as Wang Zi in Chinese, was a real Chinese pirate lord from the 16th century. Are you serious, and how come all this isn't common knowledge? That just tells me that only certain people know. Only certain people who were alive back then know this. Bro, hold on, bro. Hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Rocks also had Cheeky under him. So literally, all of the members who left Rox's crew went on to become emperors. It looks like the only individual who became of that status back then that wasn't a part of the crew was Roger, which is probably why he was seen as the king. Like, yo, this man came out of nowhere and took over everyone. You kind of see this thing on the left, this silhouette on the left that kind of does look cheeky, dog. I kind of like, excuse me. Bro, that's insane. Bro, they had every... They were legendary. They were truly legendary. Well, one reason is that most of the members couldn't stand each other, so they downplayed their exploits as a group. Their Captain Rock strived to become king of the world. They were basically a terrorist group bearing their fangs at the world government. So the government covered up their actions, which is another reason. Hold on. Did I? No, no, I didn't miss a page. They're basically a terrorist group bearing their fangs to the world government. So the government covered up their actions, which is another reason. But back then, their name was known throughout the world, which is why people who were alive back then know who the Rocks Pirates are. 38 years ago, a fateful incident occurred at a place known as God Valley. NL? On that fateful day, the, the Rocks, the strongest pirate crew in the world, perished on that island. Perished on that island? So, on this island known as, as God Valley, the entire crew perished, like, on some... Uh, I'm going to assume that someone either took them out or they just disbanded. I want to believe it's they disbanded due to a certain situation or due to the fact that maybe a lot of their members uh, decided to, like, go off in different directions. But at the same time, if they were truly burying their fangs in the world government, trying to make rocks the, 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 the leader of this entire thing, then why would they disband it? You know, why would they disband then? Why would they decide to take it upon themselves to, to get out then? 
So, but it says they perished on that island in a place known as God Valley. That is interesting, God Valley. Three years ago, a fateful incident occurred at a place known as God Valley. On that fateful day, the rocks, the strongest power crew in the world, perished on that island. Perished, man, like that, that is a very specific word. And I don't know if that's gonna be the same word used in different translations, but perished is something very fast. Perished means that they, it, it, that, that's something that indicates that it ceases to exist. It perished. So it probably never resurfaced after that time. The incident was big news! Where's my boy at? Is that Garp? Bro, is that my boy Garp? All bloodied up and looking fresh! Their unstoppable evil rampage, rampage was trampled over all. Their unstoppable evil rampage was trampled over all in its wake, was finally quelled by Marine Vice Admiral Garp. After the incident, Garp's name reverberated across the world, and that is how he became known as the Hero of the Marines. So that is how yo Garp is a goat, bro. Their unstoppable evil rampage trampled over all in its wake, was finally quelled by Marine Vice Admiral Garp. After the incident, Garf's name reverberated across the world, and that is how he became known as the hero of the Marines. But bro, I know Garp is a monster, right? But do we really... Do... I don't know, maybe it's just me, bro. But Garp taking on the likes of Whitebeard, Big Mom, Kaido, Shiki, and Rox at once. I know they were young, so I'm, I'm, but Garp was young too. I'm going to assume that just, it says the captain, right? No, no, it says the, the crew perished, not the captain, the crew. I'm curious. I'm curious because Garp in chapter 107 was talking about how, how if they were to resurface, it'd be very, very, very bad. How the fate of the entire world could change. And Garp knows that better than anyone if he's the one that caused them to perish, right? If it's because of him that they perished. But I want to know if it, it fits like a half and half thing because I do believe that Garp probably took them on, right? And more than likely, probably did go for the storm. But I also want, I, I, I might also be the case of a smoker type of situation from Alabasta where someone else could have been there to help out Garp. Bro, and that's a high possibility because that thought by itself, even though Garp states that he probably didn't want the admiral position because the responsibilities that it entailed, maybe it was because he felt guilty or the fact that he never really, or, 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 or that he didn't 100% take out the rocks in a smoker type of situation. But I'm not sure, man. I'm not sure because we know that Garp is capable of that. Garp is the one who went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Roger. But by God, man, this is five, five individuals, man. That, 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 that's, that, that's the, the Rock's pirate crew seems like the strongest pirate crew that we know of to date. And to see that Garp was the one that took them out, it just leaves many, many questions. It leaves questions, man. But I don't know. But I guess we'll leave that to the side right now and just hype up Garp for the fact that now that, we know how, now that we have confirmation that these dudes were a crew together back then, because we knew that Garp was the one that, because he took him out, he became the hero of the Marines. But now that we have confirmation that they were actually all together in an alliance, and they were all in tune, in, uh, all together, all fused with one goal in mind, to make rocks the king of the world. And you're telling me... of the world. Is instant messenger Sama rocks? Hold on. He even has the spikes on his head.
flag north. Okay, it's rocks. If Rox truly is the king of the world, if Rox is the messenger, Sama, then it makes complete and total sense why the Emperor system exists. The Emperor exists. The Emperor system exists because he wanted his crewmates to be. He wanted to be the true ruler of the world. He ruled the world government. He ruled the celestial dragons. He ruled them all. Well, the ones who ruled the pirate seas were his crew. And yet, the reason why all three of them didn't go after the One Piece is because he's the one that knew all of that. And the one person who didn't care was Roger because he wasn't a part of his crew. Bro, if Rox is instant messenger Sama, this all this entire series makes so much sense. This entire series now makes a ton more sense on why the Emperor system probably didn't exist, on why the Emperor system was created, on why in order to create this balance in the world was all this ruse created by instant messenger Sama to have complete and total control of both the pirate world and his own world. But then where does Garp lead into this entire situation, man? Where does Garp lead into this? Because was finally called by Vice Marine Vice Admiral Garp. After the incident, Garp's name reverberated across the world, and, and that is how he became known as the Hero of the Marines. Let's continue reading, man. I, I'm going to go back to this. So that's what happened. Vice Admiral Garp has many acts of, of heroism under his belt. However, he doesn't like talking about this one in particular. There we go. He'll acknowledge it if you ask him about it, but Big Mom and Kaido... Things keep going from bad. No, oh, it shows Garp reading the newspaper. But hold on, I'll be right back. However, he doesn't like talking about this one in particular. He'll acknowledge it if you ask him about it, but dude. Hey, mommy, what I'm telling y'all, man, it might be the case of what happened on that day that he doesn't want, that he's just keeping to his heart. Garp is keeping that inside of his heart locked away and he's never telling anyone, man, about the true, about what truly happened on that day all those years ago, man, on God Valley, bro. To see him of all people seeing Big Mom and Kaido back together again is probably bringing back all, all, all those vibes. The biggest reason why is because he allied with a pirate. What did I just say? Bro, I had a feeling, Doc, because I'm like, how in the flying flagners do you expect me to believe that Garp by himself could take on all five of them? I know Garp is a goat. This man is Luffy's gramps, you know, he's the king's gramps, he's dragon's pops. He fought Roger one-on-one -on -one all the time back in the day, man, equal duels. But dog, that's five. Five emperor-level characters. At once. Once. But he allied with a pirate. He allied with a pirate. Who is that pirate? Although that part was never reported. Who in the flying flag north? Who, which pirate could possibly, I mean, uh, aside from Roger, it, it, could it be Roger? I mean, Roger surfaced when he was younger, but it's not like, I don't think that, that that connects. If Roger's truly the one that allowed, that made them disband, that would be insane. Oh, that part was never reported. A pirate? There was another reason, though. He had to protect the celestial dragons during that mission. So Garp was on like a, uh, he, he was on like a, uh, one of those escort missions to escort the, the Celestial Dragons. The, the Celestial Dragons were, in, were involved. As in our duty as Marines to serve, the, to, to serve the Celestial Dragons, his sense of morality never allowed him to believe that. The main reason Garp always rejected the title of Admiral is because it would, it would have made him a direct subordinate of the Celestial Dragons. That is the real reason. It's not because he felt guilty. It's because he didn't want to be with those dudes. And we know how back in the reverie that was hinted at. How he was like, yeah, man, those guys are scummy and they're scumbags. And he'll say it to their face. You know, Garpy doesn't care. He has that Luffy type personality to him. So the fact that he has that uh, is going to make him not believe in them at all. But the fact that he probably had to escort them on that day and to protect them means that, you know, he must have been conflicted with himself because he hates them with all their heart. But this also leads to another to another event. If the Celestial Dragons were involved, it is not too far-fetched to believe that all of this is surrounding what we have, we have been saying for so long, which is the true, which is the truth about what truly took place uh, between uh, the reason why Dragon doesn't want to be a, a Marine or following Garp's footsteps. Because maybe Garp, well, no, I don't think he took Dragon with him, you know. Dragon's probably really, really young. Or he probably just didn't, we probably knew of the situation or whatever, but his popularity and achievements and probably the only reason why they haven't disposed of him for his attitude. Wow. His popularity and achievements are probably the only reason why they haven't, and Sengoku knows his brother anyone because Sengoku's been with him the entire time. 
Sengoku knows exactly how powerful and how important Garp is to this entire situation. Not only that, but he knows his justice, man. Garp has a true sense of justice. Garp and Roger encounter. <laughs> Garp and Roger encountered each other on the island and teamed up to defeat the Rogs Pirates. Can you imagine that? Yo, look at Roger right here on the left. Garp and Roger taking on the Rocks Pirates on some uh, Smoker and Luffy taking on Crocodiles. Was, no, 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 but this one was more direct. Luffy defeated Crocodile. Smoker was the one that was taking care of the entire situation. But in this case, it looked like Roger and Garp by themselves took on five Emperor level characters. Five! All in order to protect the Celestial Dragons and their slaves. Roger did too? Hey, no, that's, that makes sense though. If Roger was that Luffy type of character, that he just did um, what was quote unquote right for the situation at hand. And also if Roger, if he and Garp already encountered each other before, um, well, it says Garp and, and Roger encountered each other, but it doesn't seem for the first time. So maybe that's why they respect each other so much is because Roger helped them on that day. But I don't know, man, I'm curious. So in order to protect the Celestial Dragons and their slaves during that, during that is now known as the God Valley Incident. In order to, man, of all things to protect the Celestial Dragons, Roger and Garp, of all people, to, 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 to protect them against those, you know that? I don't know how the individuals that were there, the other fodder marines, whatever, I don't know how, they, how they're still alive. Do you know what, how, the, the kind of clout that was a, in that vicinity? Roger, Garp, Big Mom, Kaido, Whitebeard, Shaky Rocks? Anyone in that, I'm surprised the island exists, or it probably doesn't exist, because no one's brought it up since. Probably doesn't even exist anymore. That's insane, you fought alongside the Pirate King? It, it's not too far-fetched though, dog. it really isn't. What a roll call, the Celestial Dragons, Roger and the Rocks, dude, I want a flashback of that, you know what I'm saying? What, what exactly was on that island? I've never even heard of that place. Facts! The island of God Valley is no longer drawn on the maps of the world. The truth of the matter is, after that incident, God Valley disappeared without a, it disappeared without a trace? The truth of the matter is, after that incident, God Valley disappeared without a trace. God Valley. Like, a back, part of the back of my mind is like, this could be related to Raftel, but at the same time, I don't know. Because why, why, why would they have fought there? You know, and not have fought there way later down the line. Unless Roger decided to come back and do another round of the world, which is possible. Because we know that he, Roger was a little older whenever he reached Logetown, so he probably went all the way back and then came around. But I don't know. I have no idea. The truth of the matter is, after that incident, God Valley disappeared without a trace. So it disappeared. An island that the world government wanted to hide was like... <sighs> buster call. It got hit by a buster call. An island the world government wanted to hide was wiped away from the history books. Do you really want to know more about an island like that? Rock's ambition to become the king of the world. <laughs> that gives me goosebumps, bro. It meant he was involved with many of this world's taboo subjects. That's why there isn't much information on the Rocks Pirates anymore. Taboo subjects. Yo, the Bonnie Glyphs, the ancient weapons, the Will of D, the Wumpies. However, I'm sure that those memories are lying dormant in the minds of the more veteran Marines. Even though it's all in the past, it seems unbelievable there was a man capable of leading three of the four Emperors. You feel me? Do you feel me? That's exactly how I feel! He was probably Roger's first and most... First and most formidable rival. Guys, we talked about this for so long. And we were like, yo, could it have been possible that Roger and Rox had a confrontation? And now, it looks like they fought then. But he says first and most formidable rival. Yo. I don't know about y'all. But this raises Roger's already insane level of hype to another level. Because Roger was fighting against the captain of an, of an individual who had three, three. In that crew, under rocks were four level emperor, four emperor level talents. And Roger took them on. Now granted, his crew was extremely hacks as well. Roger, if he had the same individuals that he has, his crew was also OP. And, all, and a lot of them have conquered his King Hockey, probably Hockey Masters. I mean, they were in like swimwear. But... My god, Rox was Roger's first and most formidable rival. Like that, you know, that, that, that's exciting. Because what that tells me is that Roger went and took him out. 
And then after that, that's what led him on the on the on the path to becoming the king of the pirates. But I don't know. Oh my god. If Rox is instant messenger sama, it makes so much sense. It makes so much sense because if he truly really cared about Roger and that was his first rival then the reason why he has that straw hat down below is to keep memories of him or it might not even be related to that but that's the first thing that came to mind the straw hat the straw hat the straw hat but Roger didn't even have, didn't even have the straw hat in that picture that we just saw I don't know I don't know man I don't know he may have been known throughout the world as Captain Rocks. Yo, we actually get to see him right here. Like, he had like some crazy hairstyles, some Jetson Radio stuff. He may have been known throughout the world as Captain Rocks, but his true name was Rocks D. His true name was Rocks D Zebek. A type of sailing ship. He may no longer be amongst us, but he is one of the few with the initial D we have from time to time. Yo, he was a D? But bro, that's unlike anything we've heard of before. Like, usually, oh, well, there's certain characters that don't have the, like, we know that we know that we know of, like, the monkey and the marshal and certain of the other D families. Uh, but there are other characters, too, that are, they, they appear to be, like, the one in their family that has it. Uh, but, Rox D. Zebek. That's a beast name. Rox D. Zebek. So, Rox was, 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 had the D in him, too. You know, this is all just like Roger probably knows the truth then man. I mean not Roger uh, Roger of course knows the truth. Garp. Garp probably knows what the will of D is, right? I'm going to assume the confrontation with Rox, because if Rox was it was involved with all that stuff with the Poneglyphs, with the One Piece, with the Will of D, with all that stuff. Go on. Well, it's true that Kaido and Big Mom were part of the same crew in the past. They're much stronger than they were 38 years ago. If if they have truly formed an alliance, that is also true, right? Big Mom and Kaido were young then, right? You know, in, in a similar fashion to where, um, at that point in time, you or at that point in time, uh, he had Shanks on his crew, right? Roger had Shanks, but it was a young Shanks. So of course, it isn't the same Shanks that we know now. If he would have had that same Shanks, you know, Roger and Shanks together, I don't know who's beating that couple. Uh, th those two together, you know what I'm saying? But. He had a young Shanks, right? And that wasn't even then. Like Shanks probably wasn't even born, or he was born, but he was he was he was he was very very small. So with that being said, uh, it does seem a lot more plausible that they were much younger. But even then, like all of them facing off against Roger and Garp, dog, like in their prime, you never know. <laughs> you never know, dog. You know, they were they were legends. If they have truly formed an alliance then it may lead to the formation of the worst pirate crew in the world. 100%, I mean, it already is. What are the current? They're bounties. They're bounties! Oh yes, I was just working on updating the bounties of those who have been stripped of their warlord status. Oh, we're gonna know the bounties? I'm getting my Santa hat. I'm getting my Santa hat, dude. Hold on. I have been waiting for this moment. I have been waiting for this moment for the entire series to finally have an actual bounty for some of the emperors and finally having a bounty for some of the Shichibukai, bro. And then we're, we're actually gonna see, oh man, of those who've been stripped of the world of status. So we may as well review these bounties as well. The first, the man who became an emperor one year ago, Blackbeard, his one up? As a result of his attack on Impel Dawn two years ago, he was able to recruit very powerful subordinates. He is the current ruler of the Pirate's Island Beehive. His influence is constantly expanding and he's slowly overtaking Whitebeard as a force to be reckoned with. The Admiral of the Blackbeard. The Admiral <laughs> of the Blackbeard Pirates, Marshal D. Teach Bounty 2 Bill. 200, no. Yeah, 2 billion, 247 million, 600,000. So my boy Blackbeard is rocketing, man. Look at his bounty poster. Look at Fred. The next emperor we should discuss is this man. He was first recognized as an emperor six years ago and as the youngest of the four. Uh, the... No way. No way. No way. No, bro. We're... I don't know. Bro. 
There's no way. We're about to find out what Shanks' bounty is, bro. I can't believe- Bro, I feel like when I look at this, I'm gonna go blind, bro, because this, I shouldn't be seeing this, dude. I should not be seeing this. I should not! This is end of series stuff! And this emperor we should discuss is this man who was first recognized as an emperor six years ago and is the youngest of the four. His subordinates trust him greatly. His executives are his executives are all big names. Beckman! And Yasop! Bro! Oh the 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 Ben Beckman! Look at Lucky Roo, bro! Lucky Roo is bodying anyone! Anyone! While eating a flippin' slice of meat. Boasting high bounties across the board, they are, they are a well-balanced and, and impregnable crew. The captain of the Red Hair Pirates, Red Hair Shakes, bounty four billion! Bro, we finally, finally get to see Shakes' bounty, dude! And it's double, double Blackbeards! It's double Blackbeards, dude. Four bill. My boy Akagami no Shanks is worth four bills, dude. Four billion forty-eight million nine hundred thousand. Shanks, yo, bro. Y'all already know how, how 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 I rate chapters. If Blackbeard or Shanks is in a chapter, that mug is an awesome sauce, dude. It's a set out level chapter. They're both in it. No, they're posters, but they're both in it. <sighs> oh God, that just means that they're not the highest, bro. Are you telling me that Kaido and Big Mom are the are, are, are have a higher bounty than Shanks? I mean, it makes sense because Kaido and Big Mom have been around for much longer. Oh, here we go. Moving on, we have the natural-born destroyer who was said to have wiped out a village on the island of giants, Elbaf, when she was a mere child. Refusing to trust anyone other than her own bloodline, she founded the country of Totoland, ruling over it with her 85 children. She is the qu queen of the kingdom of sweets. I'm scared to look at big moms, bro. <laughs> well, how high is this about to be? How high is this about to be? Bro, I can't believe we saw shakes and black... Stop, stop. <sighs> the captain of the big mom pirates, Charlotte Linlin? Four billion three hundred eighty-eight million, or four billion three hundred eighty-eight million. So, her bounty is three hundred million more than Shanks. And Shanks has said he was only recognized as an emperor just a few years ago, which means that Shanks was not an emperor whenever he was. Whenever uh, at the beginning of the series, whenever he, whenever Luffy was out there uh, and and he sacrificed his arm for the next excuse me for the next generation, it was he wasn't an emperor then. When we were led to believe that he was. Right, that's what it said? He was first recognized as an emperor six years ago and as the youngest of the four. Okay, but regardless, we continue. <laughs> but anyways, Big Mom has a fat bounty, dude. Four bills. Oh, God. Bro. Yo, Kaido's about to be rocking like either a 4.5 bill or a 5 bill. <sighs> Last but not least is this man. Although he was only the, an apprentice when he was with the Rocks Pirates, he was able to rally many infamous pirates to his banner thanks to his sheer strength and became an emperor in the process. Give it to me, man. What is Brock Lesnar's bounty, bro? The gov- The governor general of the Beast Pirates. Kaido of the Beasts. I don't want to see it, man. What is it? Four billion six hundred and eleven million. So you see a, 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 um, a sort of like, they add on like 300 mil, or th th yeah, 300 mil every single time. So like for Shanks, four, four billion, th what was it, 48? So you have four billion forty-eight mil. Then you had Big Mom with four billion three hundred, and now you have Kaido with four with four billion six six hundred. So there's like an additional three hundred, just based on I'm going to assume just a level of threat that they have to the to, to the world because we know that, that Kaido, uh, with how many people he has gathered, is a massive threat, man. He is a massive threat. I can't believe we just got all of the all of their bounties. Like, I'm actually sh I can't believe that I live in an era where all of the bounties of the emperors were just revealed. I, I'm, I don't know, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I felt like this was so far. I felt like this was, I, I, because I've been reading this series for so long, I felt like this was something I would see like in 2029. I can't believe what I'm seeing, bro. Kaido's bounty, bro. Shanks, Black. Well, I already saw Blackbeard's, but to see Shanks, Big Mom, and Kaido's bounty. 
How depressing. Oh god, I forgot, bro. The warlords. Yo, bro, I was so good with the emperors and we I forgot about the warlords. From here on out, we can no longer use the seven warlords as a weapon against the four emperors. We'll have to see how the SSG from the Marine Science Special Science The Marine Special Science Vegapunk. Before we can determine whether the, re the removal of this poison from our ranks was the decision, on a related note, these were the bounties of, on the legends of the previous- Oh my god. Bro, if I see Roger's bounty, I'm leaving. I am leaving. I might turn off the camera there. Because they, uh, how in the- how, how, how can I possibly like- I, I don't know. As a matter of fact, I'm, move, I'm moving the chair. I'm moving the chair. I'm moving the chair. I, don't know. I can't believe this. On the legends of the previous era. Oh God. White beard five. <laughs> My boy White beard rocking the five bill, bro. Yo, White beard was out here rocking five Billy bills. Yo, that's insane though, because that just tells me. That they truly did value, like, Whitebeard and Rox's crew and then everything else that he was able to do after that, they truly valued, like, that man's, uh, the threat that he had to the world, dude. Five bills. Yo, know, it's interesting that he has the same uh, second number as, as Shanks. Well, uh, is it? Shanks was, was 48, right? Or was it also 46? Anyways, five billion, 46 million. Freaking Whitebeard. Roger, I don't, don't want to see Rogers. Bro, I can't, I can't I, no, I can, bro. This, this is, I, I feel like... I don't, I, I don't feel right. I don't feel right knowing this information, bro. I feel like, I, I feel like I'm getting spoiled. I don't feel right knowing this, bro. I don't feel not right knowing this. Whenever the chapter's... I, I, I don't feel right, dog. I shouldn't know this information. The Captain of the Roger Pirates. The Pirate King. Goldie Roger. Let me make sure. Is my camera still on? I can't, bro. 5.5! Bro. This man, Roger, had a bounty of 5.5 bills, dude. Look at him in the picture! I need a picture that in my room. Let's put it right here. Roger, 5.5! My bills, dude! The king! The true king, dude! Five point five billion! We'll move on. No single pirate has ever surpassed the bounties of these two. Not even rocks. Not even rocks. I was expecting to see rocks. But no pirate has ever surpassed the bounty of Whitebeard and Roger, bro, the rulers of the era. Roger was rocking five bill. So that means that, well, no, hold on, hold on, wait, wait, wait. He says no single pirate. He didn't say no, no person. How high is Dragon's bounty, bro? How high is Dragon's bounty? No single pirate. Pirate. Bro, this has to be one of the, like, the King's Hockey emanating off of this page is too much. It's too much. The captain of the Whitebeard Pirates, Edward Newgate, put a bounty five billion. And then the captain of the Whitebeard Pirates, Fire King Gold Roger, bounty five point five. Six hundred and sixty, five hundred and sixty, five hundred sixty four million eight hundred thousand. I shouldn't know this, man. I feel wrong knowing their bounties, bro. This is insane. However, if Kaido and Big Mom's alliance comes to fruition, their combined bounty will exceed them both. I suppose that is true. Especially, I mean, with a threat that they currently pose to the entire world. They are currently in Wano, a country on it that is unaffiliated with the world government they are. Fleet Admiral Sakazuki, we're leaving Wano alone. Yo, Akainu stopped it, bro. He walked into the room and was like, yo, we're, 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 not, we're not going there. We don't have the resources to divert their single Kusan. Of course, I had no intention of interfering. I only wanted to pass on my knowledge of this new generation of Marines. Even pirates are capable of developing relationships with one another. Their actions always have a motive behind them. One cannot hope to predict the, the future when they are ignorant of the past. What a line. 
and you have and you have a uh, Send Goku walking to the front. You have a kind of the back. Speaking of which, there was a pirate in Wano that Whitebeard Roger and Red Haired favored. A pirate in Wano that Whitebeard Roger and Red Haired favored. Odin? Wasn't there? Do you mean Kozuki Odin? He used to be a division commander in Whitebeard. So you're telling me Odin was a Whitebeard and Roger ship? Eventually, he was poached by Roger to accompany him on the Pirate King's final. This current situation couldn't possibly have anything to do with Odin, could it? Well, doesn't it seem like Wano is a common factor for all these big shots? Isn't it a bit too much of a coincidence, don't you think? Cause it is like a <laughs> There's no way in the flag nards, bro. I mean, of course Odin has something to do with all this. Which is why we need to get that flashback. That's, that looks like exactly where we're heading to. I can't believe that this chapter didn't end the, uh... That it, it didn't end the, the 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 around the world thing. Oda still has more to show us, bro, dog. It, it looks like a perfect transition now into actually knowing about Odin and his past. You're the Pirate Kings, bro. I can't believe what I just read. I, I'm 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 100% honest with y'all. This chapter to me is what I expected whenever we, whenever we got those original Reverie chapters. I expected to get nonstop information from page one to page twenty. I thought this week's chapter was going to be reactions to the bounties and and uh, possibly seeing, seeing like certain characters like a Shanks and or an instant messenger Sama or whatever the case may be. But never in a million years did I expect to get all of the information, guys. I don't think we've ever received this much information about the past of One Piece in one chapter. This was absolutely insane. This was chapter after page after page after page. In one chapter, we got to find out every single emperor's bounty. We now know. Listen to me very, very carefully, man. I can't believe what I'm about to say. We now know Shanks, Kaido, Big Mom, Whitebeard, and Roger's bounty. All these years, I thought Shanks had the highest bounty of all the Yonko. I really, really did. But it looks like he, because he recently just entered in a similar fashion to Blackbeard, he has one of the lowest in the Emperors. Which makes sense if he truly just became an Emperor four years ago, which I'm still very, very curious on. Like, holy flag, uh, or six years ago. Like, um, yo, but I said, yo, he has individuals under him like Beckham and Rue. I was like, Rue! <laughs> and Yasop. But man, dude, I, I mean... And then not only that, just finding out the truth of what happened back then with Garp and uh, and Whitebeard and, and, and what the Rocks crew truly had and what and what they were and how they were trying to make the man king of the world. Now, God value they, per they perished, but it was thanks to the efforts of Garp and Roger who were protecting the celestial dragons, dude. Like, that's insane. Give me one second. I'm gonna make sure that this file doesn't get corrupt. Give me one second. Well, I think attempt to think and process. I can't believe what I did. Bro. It's like my brain is attempting to process all the information I just received, dog. I now know Roger's bounty. I, I doesn't, it doesn't feel right. I feel like I shouldn't know this, dude. I feel like I just took a, like, I opened Oda's drawer, and inside of his drawer was this massive pack of notes that was like, yo. <gasps> like, bro? Like, no, like, we didn't deserve all this information at once, man. Give me a sec, man. You know, there are certain points in time when you're reading the series, where you just feel emotionally and physically drained after reading something so phenomenal. And I feel like that's the case right now, man. I just, I still can't believe that we received all of this information at once. I don't think we've ever gotten a chapter like this. This is going to go down as one of the greatest post-arc or post-story 
middle of the whatever chapters in the series, man. I haven't even reread the chapter, and I think it's already my one of my favorite chapters in the series. It's just when you have a chapter that closes on stuff that I want to know so badly about, man, which is Roger and his past, man. You know, this chapter had three things that I always talk about in recons pieces, in reactions, in discussions, where I always talk about those three things. I always rewatch those moments. I always rewatch those scenes. I always rewatch those things when it comes to the One Piece series. This chapter had four, not even three, four. I always rewatch Roger flashbacks. Those are my things. Those are my jam. I love those moments. This one not only had a Roger flashback, this junk had Roger all over the place. It had Roger's bounty. It had Roger's bounty, dude. Like, oh, the how? And then another character I was watching moments of, Shanks. We, have, we now know Akagami Shanks' bounty. And then, Blackbeard. White beard, the rocks, the truth behind the incident, a place called God Valley, which is more than likely relevant to the entire end series plot, celestial dragons being protected by Roger and Garb, bro. And it's like that scene from Marineford where Roger and, uh, and Garp, wherever he told him, like, uh, basically saying that he trusts him more than anyone. It's much to leave his own son to him. To somebody from the, on the opposite side. It makes so much sense now, bro. And it made sense before because someone that you cross paths with all the time, your rival that you cross paths with all the time, it makes sense that you guys uh, form a sort of bond and connection over the years. But in this case, they actually fought together. They were war buddies, bro, going into, like, swimwear against the flipping rocks. I'm drained, man. This, I, this reminds me of what I felt after I read 907. Or after I read chapter 907, I was out of it for the rest of the day. But that one was different. That one was because it was shocking. Well, this one was shocking too. But that one was because of the Shanks uh, stuff. And then, we, of course, we received Fingo Mikaido in that chapter and the revelation of what Rocks is. Or who, or like, what about the Rocks in for first place, the Empty Throne. There was a lot to think about. This one, it was just, like the chapter title calls it, truly, truly ultimate, man. This was insanity. I don't know if we've ever gotten a chapter like this. And I, because of the way that Oda sprinkles information in different places, different times, I was expecting Kid to get all this at post Wano, man. Never in a million years did I expect that a chapter in the middle of the Wano arc, in the middle of the Wano saga, would give us why Garp is the hero of the Marines. A flashback back to rocks and who they truly were with the golden lion under them captain john under them white beard kaido and big mom and then of course rocks himself rocks was apparently roger's first and most formidable rival like I just want to know what happened to rocks man you know i can sit here and theorize all day like yes it makes sense that he could be instant messenger some and it really does but then we just don't know man we just don't know we just don't know bro see i've been seeing this non-stop for the past few weeks but i have to reiterate this again 
this is why One Piece to me is so hard to surpass because there's so many other series and I'm talking about just in my heart like for other people if it's not your favorite series it's all fine and dandy man but in my heart it's so hard for me to put in something else above it because whereas for other series I have to go back and rewatch I have to go back and reread to remember how it is that I feel about them One Piece reminds me every single week why it is that I hold this series to such high regard the weekly One Piece experience is unlike anything I've ever experienced, man. I've experienced some wonderful weekly things. I was alive during the uh, WCW and WWF uh, era of the Monday Night Wars, you know, and that amazing weekly experience. I was alive during the Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa home run contests. I was alive during a lot of like the, the mid 2000 and late, 1990, late 1990s NBA duels that they had. But on a consistent basis for so many years. One Piece just continues to carry and keep this level of quality and consistency that nothing else just has. And other series are consistent and, and other series, at least for me, like for, I'm talking about just for my taste, man. Other series are consistent. They they go up into like swimwear, man, but I just prefer to read them and binge and watch them and binge. This is like one of the only series that I can read weekly and, and still feel like it's a binging experience because you just get so much out of one chapter. You get so much, dog. It's incredible. This is truly, I, I, I don't, I don't know, man. If Oda gave us this now, bro, my, my head is spinning, man. I already came into this with my head spinning. Let alone how it feels now. Let alone how it feels now. I can't believe, bro. Like I said, I just, I, I feel like a legit, like I opened Oda's drawer and, and there was this w incredible pile of information and I was just looking through it. That's what this chapter felt like. Like, oh my gosh, rocks. Garp? Roger? Shanks? Whitebeard? Roger? Big Mom and Kaido's bounty? The truth? What does Odin have in all of these? Odin a part of Whitebeard's crew before he joined Roger for his last voyage? Wano has a connection between all of them? Garp the hero of the marines? Rox being the actual captain with all of them in his crew? Shiki inside of his crew? The God Valley? Um, uh, rocks being involved with all the stuff that the the world government holds to be extremely sacred and, and will wipe out anyone the moment that they speak of these things. Possible connections to... He has that connection to the Pony Glyphs, the Will of D, and all that stuff. Celestial dragons being protected by Roger and Garb. I still can't... I can't even begin to fathom that. Knowing how the pirates are, knowing how this entire series played up until this point in time, it, I can't even begin to fathom the fact that Roger and Garp were protecting celestial dragons. Man, Garp is a goat, bro. I, and I mean that wholeheartedly. This man, Monkey D. Garp, is a true legend. Like, there are legends, but that man is a legend legend. That man is a six star. That man is a galaxy oval. That man is an LR in Dokken Battle. He is a true legend, man. This man, Garp. I mean, the accomplishments that this man has shown off in the series and what he has done, what he has accomplished, what he has uh, shown off, how everybody else respects him. This chapter just took it to another level. I mean, I thought, the, I thought the Dao and Chin Zhao stuff was peak. Like, this man was destroying mountains with his fists. And I was like, good God, bro, Garb. Then I was like, you know what? We look back at Strong World and Strong World Episode Zero. Garb and Roger having daily duels. Or not daily duels, but, you know, facing off. And I'm like, anybody who faces off with Roger is a goat. If they live on to tell the tale, and Garb did all the time. But in this chapter, this man went up against Rox, Whitebeard, Kaido, Big Mom, and Shiki on one place alongside Roger and guess who came out of there winning that battle? Garp. Let me talk about Shanks for a sec, bro. I think this chapter 
just made my love for Shanks go up even higher. Because Shanks in six years managed to catch up to the rest of these people who have been around for 38 years. 38 years. They've been going up in like swimwork, creating their crew slowly but surely after the rocks perished. All three of them, Whitebeard, Big Mom, and Kaido, who have been like swimmer creating their crews, were recognized worldwide. Shanks just became an emperor six years ago, and he's already caught up to the Mint Bounty. What does that tell you about Akagami no Shanks, man? Six years to do what they did in 38. We now live in a time and place where we can discuss, no longer speculate, no longer think about, we know what the highest pirate bounty is. We know what Roger's bounty is. I can't believe I know this information. It just seems so far out. Like I thought we weren't gonna know what Roger's bounty was till the final arc. I seriously believe that in the bottom of my heart. Like for so many years, I was like, we're not gonna know what Roger and Wiper, we, we might not never know what their bounties are. And the fact that we know what their bounties are, all six, How high is Luffy's bounty going to go up? Because they said, if they truly form this alliance, their bounty is going to go up even higher. So with that being said, and he continues to say, or I'm um, sorry, that uh, my, my, my brain is, but he was saying that Big Mom and Kaido's bounty is probably going to go up. So with their bounty going up, Luffy's bounty has to go up. So if Luffy's bounty goes up, How high is his bounty go for this? Is he gonna get into the threes? Is Luffy's bounty gonna go into the threes? If Big Mom and Kaido fall in this arc and credit goes to Luffy for at least one of them, that man's bounty is going up until at late two points or maybe three. Let's just skim through this real quick, man. Yo, I've got some stuff to do today, man, but I don't know how I'm gonna do it now, bro. But I don't care. I went into this chapter, man. I'm not going to lie to y'all, man. The last few days have been rough. They really have. But this chapter, man, truly just made my mood. Like, you, you can't even touch it. Like, I'm going to be happy all day. My brain's going to be made of mush, but I'm going to be happy all day. I forgot these color pages existed. I forgot about this. I, I forgot about this conversation. I forgot about this conversation between that kind of when if we saw how could I could how could I remember whenever you have the chapter have given us all the information. SSG, which is which was revealed to be um Vegapunk's uh, this, what was it was the the science something group. Um so it looks like Vegapunk's SSG is gonna be what is gonna maintain the the, the, the power of the that, that apparently they have enough faith in that, which is what exactly what, what I was on Brago's channel just recently. We were talking about that. On like what is going to be the uh, Vegapunk's uh, weapon and or uh, system that he's going to put in place in order to replace the Chichibukai that they believe in that system so much that they that they would be willing to risk you know getting the Chichibukai out of there. So whatever that SSG is has to be very very formidable. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. It looks like we're, we're probably going to see that very very soon. I can't believe that this, this didn't end the act, bro. I, re I can't. I can't believe that we're still going to continue on this madness. I might even get Odin's flashback soon. The rocks, man. You get this, like, massive history lesson. Like, Sengoku's just giving us a massive history lesson, bro. The rocks, pirates. Many years ago, Square Enix, not... <laughs> On the pirate island beehive, many significant individuals came together to peak to seek a quick fame, a quick path to fame and fortune. That meeting led to the formation of the Rocks Pirates. And that's where Blackbeard is, man. I still think there's a connection there. There, there can't be either Blackbeard was around back then, a, a, a very young and like a Shanks type of scenario, or he just researched it. And he just wanted to go and be in their island and rule that island. I, confirmation for this man was huge. 
Now, I still can't get over how Rock's is like physique looks like, like the spiky head, similar to like that of Instant Messenger Sama. But then whenever we actually, whenever we actually got a closer look at Rock's, kind of like he had like his hair was on some Jet Set Radio stuff, you know. Whitebeard, Beam Mom, and Kaido in their youth, they were led by their Captain Rocks. I can't believe it. Their Captain Rocks strive to become king of the world, bro. Do you know what that is, man? That's... That was back in an era where that was impossible. like, Or, or where that was something that hadn't been done before, as far as I'm concerned. So the fact that Rocks... He had to have had King's Hockey. If Rocks wanted to strive he had the ambition to become king of the world he had to be he had to be he had to have a king saki there's no question about that they were basically a terrorist group bearing their fangs at the world government man they were the phantom troop bro so the government covered up their actions there's another reason but back then there wasn't there was their name was known throughout the world you can see the rocks of ship yo their ship looks so beast dude as the skull right there in the front the skull on the o in the rocks 38 years ago a fateful incident occurred at a place known as god valley the fateful day the rocks, the strongest pirate crew in the world, perished on that island, and it was thanks to the efforts of Garp and Roger. Yo, look at how beast Garp looks right here, man. Look at how, look at how beast he looks right here, bro. I can't My god, dude, Garp and Roger went into, like, swim work, bro. That's amazing to me, man. Protecting celestial dragons, dude. Vice Admiral Garp, the hero of the Marines. No wonder everybody respects him so much, bro. I would, too. My gosh. He'll acknowledge it if you ask him about it, but he doesn't like talking about that one, man. Because he allied with a pirate, bro, with his boy dog with Raji. The celestial dragons, man. Just look at look at how much clout this panel has, bro. I feel like I'm gonna I feel like I'm gonna knock I, I'm gonna hit the floor. Just looking at this panel. Garp and Roger. And you see Whitebeard Rocks, Big Mommy. God, it was hype, dude! Garp and Roger encountered each other on the island and teamed up to defeat the Rocks Pirates, all in order to protect the Celestial Dragons and their slaves. During that is not known as the God Valley incident, man. I want to know if God Valley is going to be brought up in in the series again. More than likely is. I'm expecting it to, at least. But we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Amazing. Exactly what a roll call. Celestial Dragons, Roger, and the Rocks, man. And they hit a buster call on that island, apparently, bro. An island the world government wanted to hide was wiped away from the history books. Wow. And he, he was involved in all the taboo subjects. Pro it was Roger's first and most formidable rival, bro. Look, Rox D. Zebek. A type of sailing ship. He may have... Been known throughout the world as Captain Rocks, but his true name was Rocks D. Zebek. He may no he may no longer be amongst us, but he is one of the few with the initial D who have appeared from time to time. Those with the individuals th those individuals with the name of D will cause a storm, man. That's the that's the way of life. My brain, bro. The bounties. I can't I still can't believe this, bro. Blackbeard stock. The Admiral. <laughs> Bro, I just went after this panel right here was when my brain just turned into mush. Shanks, bro. Shanks. Shanks speech theme. Bro, look at how good he looks! The captain of the red hair fire with the red hair shakes! I am so happy that my camera's still intact, bro. The last time I saw Shanks, that caught me off. I, you know what? Had they shown us this bounty poster before the, the, um, uh, you know, they were hyping him up? Uh, like, so this is the captain of, the youngest captain, and he's the captain of Backman and whatever. I would have just seen Shanks' poster, my camera would be out the window. So thank you, Oda. Thank you so much for hyping us up before we got this because that. God knows. I probably I wouldn't have finished the reaction because my camera would be broken, but <sighs> Big Mom man, 4.3 bill, dude. Kaido 4.6. Oh, 
and in the same page, in the same fucking page. <laughs> Look at the Roger's bounty, bro. Like, what is this chapter? What? I'm, I'm not supposed to know this. And then Kaino saying we're leaving Wano alone, and. I'm gonna read this final panel and I'm done, man. I'm gonna read this final page and I'm done because I just, I can't, my brain, it's, it's so, it's, it's oatmeal. It's oatmeal. I can't, I can't think. I, I just, the only thing I'm running in my mind right now is, is, is those bounties. Those bounties and the fact that Roger and Garp were fighting up against the phone. Oh my god, dude. Hopefully later on today, my, my brain, whenever I, I have free time again, I'll be able to sit down and talk about it again, but we'll see what happens, bro. I'm not even sure anymore, man. My, my, my. Speaking of which, there was a pirate in Wano that Whitebeard, Roger, and Redhead favored wasn't there. Do you mean Kazuki Odin? He's we had Division Commander Whitebeard's ship. Roger took him and he accompanied him on his Pirate King's final voyage. Doesn't it seem like Wano is a common factor for all these big shots? Isn't it a bit too much of a coincidence, don't you think? Sakazuki makes so much sense though, bro, because that's where the Pondagus were created, man. I mean, Wano has so much important information. Post Wano, man, like I've been saying it for so long and I'm going to reiterate it again, especially after this chapter. Post Wano is going to be the most insane back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back chapters that we have ever seen in the series. We might, at this point, after this chapter, we can't rule out what we're going to find on Wano. Because this is end of series stuff here, man. In Wano, we could really find out what, uh, what, what, what certain things are. We could know literally the most important things about the Poneglyphs in this arc. We could know more about the will of d in this arc so many things about the void century possibly in this arc man i i'm, I'm i don't know man. this series right here i love it from the bottom of my heart man this is one piece bro this is the best-selling manga in history Guys, I will see you in the comment section, man. I'm going to go put this to upload and get ready and go do the rest of the stuff I need to do, man. But I don't know how I'm going to do it. I'm just so thankful to Oda that he gave us this chapter, man. I mean, what an amazing, I mean, truly a phenomenal, awesome sauce, Santa hat level plus chapter, man. Amazing, 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 amazing. Absolutely incredible. I... I When you read a chapter and you feel like you shouldn't know this information, but because you know it now, you're like, holy flag, Nards. That's how you know somebody's built up a series in the way they have, man. Chapter 957 will live on, and I said that last week. And 956 will live on, and 957, I think, trumped last week. And I still didn't go on break, bro. <laughs> There's no break next week. I don't know what's going to happen, man. I can't even think right now, so I'll think about that later. But I'm just going to appreciate and think about this chapter. Y'all have an awesome sort of day, man. Thank y'all so much for watching. I know this is a long one, but when it's something like this, you can't help it, bro. Peace out, everyone, man. And one piece of greatness.